Y'all, what's up? Let me talk about a little bit what, what happened to me today. And yesterday. Yesterday night, I tried to film this video, but it got too dark on me. I had to start over. So I tried again this morning. I got the whole video done, did the bow drill fire, did everything, even showed you how to build the fire up. So, you know, I think I'm all set. I go home, I plug it up, I'm editing it. Then when I go to press the button, upload, failure. Some of the files are corrupted. I am, oh my god. So, hopefully in this one, nothing will happen and it will go straight. Otherwise, I think I might go and do it on the crazy side. Now, let's try again. Um, in this video, I'm going to use the same spindle, the same, um, the same, um, baseboard, same boat, same handhold. Because I, my main boat drill wood source is all used up now. So, I'll have to show you what that looks like. I like to use a softwood. Tulip poplar is, the, is my personal favorite. Now, um, on my way back, later in this video, near the end, I'll take a few still pics of the um, tulip poplar. And I'll probably do a short video talking about it. But, um, this tree right here behind me, this is a young tulip poplar. Okay, now, um, when it dies, when the bark gets to a certain rotten point, there was a fly messing with me now. When it dies and the bark gets to a certain rotten point, um, it becomes very flaky and it comes off really easily. Now, you can actually fluff that up into a good tender bundle. Um, just like I just collected the cedar bark. As you saw, um, yeah, so, tulip <clears throat> poplar is a great bow drill tree to me, because you can make cordage from the, um, string, from the fibers, you can also use the wood for a spindle, a uh, hearth, or a baseboard, and the handhold. great bow drill tree, but natural cordage bow drills are not exactly the easiest things in the world to do. So, I'm going to go ahead and take you over to my base camp and set up my bow, set up my, set up everything and tell you, and show you how it's done. Okay? Hey, y'all. So, uh, yeah. Um, I'll show you me making a bow drill from scratch at some point. Let's go around. Uh, not a level gone. But here's the board. Now. I'm gonna go find me a bow for this, and then I'll get back to you, alright? Alright. Hey, y'all. Okay. So, I'm gonna take this spindle that I've used probably about six times by now, trying to make this video for y'all. What you're gonna do is you're gonna make the end that's on the bottom that you're using friction to try and create a coal with. You're gonna make that very blunt, but you're going to have a little pointy at the end. You don't want it completely rounded. You see what I mean? It's kind of pointed. Like a very, very blunt needle. Now, on the other end of the spindle, you're going to want it kind of narrow and pointed. 
so it'll look more like a crown. On the other end, it's just going to be very, very blunt. Now, your tender bundle, once you've fluffed it up and gotten it very fibrous and a lot of air space in it, you're going to stick your thumb down it and create sort of a, a bird's nest. Now, on your baseboard, you're going to find a spot on it you want, you want to drill in. It helps if you take your spindle and press it in to whichever spot so that, that way you know you're not going in too close or too deep, too far away from the um, side. And then you just kink your spindle into the baseboard. Now keep in mind, I'm not trying to make a fire yet. This is the um, burn in stage. And then you just go for a little while. Let it keep going. Let it get real smoky. Let it burn in nice and good. Alright. Once you've been done that, you've pretty much got your board set. See how now I have that new burn spot there? Alright. Next what you're gonna do. You're going to take your saw or your knife. It's much easier just to use a saw though. And you're going to carve a small pyramid shaped notch out of it. Now, when you're cutting in, you want to cut in kind of deep, but you don't want to cut in to the center. Stop before you get to the center. And you want it to look like a pyramid. You want it wider on the bottom than it is on the top. Alright, then you can take your knife or whatever and pop that little piece of wood out. Alright, now I'm going to show you what that looks like. See what I mean? wider on the bottom than it is at the top and it's close to but not at the center I think this watch might not might be a little too wide but we'll see what you want to do is you want to take something to use as a coal catcher set it under it move your stuff to the side Pink your spindle. Put your foot on top. And the proper position for this particular method is you want to take the hand, your non-dominant hand to hold the bearing block and apply pressure. You want your dominant hand using the bow. And your non-dominant foot, which would be my left foot, because I'm right-handed, holding this. And your other leg's just going to be behind you as a stabilizer. Alright, now you won't want to go slow at first. You want to create that coal dust, that black dust. Nice, even, long strokes. Then you want to pick up the speed and go a little faster. I think I have a cold. You don't always get it on the first shot. And what I want you to know, before you go out and try this, is it took me a few months to learn how to successfully do this. 
Now when it smokes on its own, then it's good. You have a coal. Now I have a coal. Don't rush it. Let it sit there and smolder and get big for a little while. Alright. Fan it with your hand lightly. Let it get, get some size to it, some strength. Get, it, get your tender bundle and everything ready. Get everything to the side. Because this is going to be the hard the part. A lot of people might mess up on. Alright, move the baseboard. You want to tap it to get that coal out of there. Now, can you see it? Then you want to lightly pop it in there. Then you want to close it up around it and blow in there very gently, almost just breathing it in. It helps if the wind is to your back so you ain't get smoke all up in your face. As it gets bigger, you can blow harder. There you have it, fire by friction. And I like to use this birch bark to get it really get the fire going. Alright, you see that? Look how intense that bark burns. And it, that, that's because it is packed full of oil and resin. They say birch bark will light even when it's wet. I tested that theory out during some rain we got this winter. It's false. So, that's the primitive bow drill fire. Um, it was not easy for me to learn. If you try and you fail, don't give up. You just gotta keep trying. You have to believe that you can do it proper materials, proper attitude, proper everything is what's going to keep you going, get you going, and get you to do this. This is not something you can just watch on here and then automatically you know it. You're not going to be able to watch this video and then be in a plane wreck and be able to do this and save everybody's lives. You need to practice this. This is a skill. I'm going to see y'all in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully this video will actually go through this time. Alright.